Hello, world. What is up? Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guest is a friend of the show, and I'm super excited to have him back. He's here to tell us all about the third annual Beverly Hills Dog Show presented by Purina, which is set to air this Sunday on NBC. He knows more about dogs than I thought any one person possibly could, and he's one of the nicest guys in the world. The great David Fry's back in the building, folks. How we feel about that? You excited? Thank you. You excited back at home? Yeah, thank you, everybody. We're going to kick it off. We're going to get started in just a moment. But real quick, before we do, I believe we have a peek at the show. So let's go ahead and run that clip. Hollywood's going to the dogs. 90210 rolls out the red carpet for pampered pooches and celebrity canines. The Beverly Hills Dog Show. Oh, looks amazing. David Fry, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, make some noise. <laughs> David, welcome back. How are you, sir? How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing great. I've now lived in Oregon for the last three years. Oh, really? Uh, Paradise, Cannon Beach, down where Haystack Rock is. But um, beautiful place. And uh, But I still get to keep doing all the great, fun things that I do every year. The two dog shows, the National Dog Show presented by Purina on Thanksgiving Day. And now the Beverly Hills Dog Show presented by Purina on Easter. So we have these two great holiday bookends for family viewing. What'd you do? Did you call them up and you go, hey, Purina, I'm a, I'm a little bored a couple of months <laughs> in. Can we do something in the middle? I, I love this show. It's the third year now. Uh, and yeah, where did it come from? Where did the idea to do this show come from? Well, it basically came because I had to leave Westminster. Okay. Uh, the, the television contract was up. You know how that world works. And, and I could choose between one or the other. NBC, to my, to my great joy, won out. And I continued doing the National Dog Show, which, which I've done with John O'Hurley for 17 years. And they said, what else do you want to do? I said, well, we should be in the West. We need a show in the West because I'm a left coast guy anyway. And why not be out there amongst all the stars and the red carpet and palm trees yeah. instead of uh, cold East Coast weather? Uh, and I said, how about the Beverly Hills, the Kennel Club of Beverly Hills? And my good friend Patty Cannon was president, and she helped us get in there. And... Uh, now, here we are. It's great Pretty fun. amazing. It's so much fun. Yeah, you're right. There's the palm trees, the red carpet, the whole night. You do it up. You really lean into the West Coast vibe. You got celebrities there with their dogs as well. And you do the show with John. You do this show with John O'Hurley as well, right? I, yeah. I do. John and I uh, have been together longer than other relationships in my life. <laughs> but uh, we have a great time with it. And, and uh, he's fun to work with. Yeah. As I say, 17 years on the National Dog Show, three years on Beverly Hills. There are times, actually, where it was we all know him as Mr. Peterman, but we'll, I'll be sitting there, and he'll say something, and, I'll, and I'm not watching him, and I say, oh, my God. I said, that wasn't John O'Hurley. That was Mr. Peterman. I said, where's Jerry? Where's Elaine? Where's Cosmo? Where are these guys? Because he's that much fun to be around. He's a great, great talent, great performer, very funny, uh, great writer. Uh, does everything well. 17 years working together. Does he? Do you guys still find ways to surprise one another? Does he still do stuff that <laughs> surprises you when you're out there, when you're calling the show? He will still every once in a while come up with some kind of fact. I said, how did you know that? I said, even I don't know that. <laughs> so, so and, and here's the great thing about the relationship. His wife and my wife are the same size. So what? We, they're the same size. They're, same si they're both size ones. So we've got a clothing deal going on back and forth. <laughs> Saves us a lot of money. I was wondering. I was like, yeah. that was, I thought you were going to be like, they're best friends. We go out all the time. And you're like, nope, they're the They have same become size. great friends, too, of course, great personal friends. And, and it's fun to have them in our life and in our world. I bet, uh, it's got to be, right? Uh, so th what, what about this show? Uh, sets it apart from all the rest. I said some of the obvious stuff, but for you, what, you know, is the is the environment a little bit? Is the atmosphere a little bit different? Are people a little more relaxed because you're on the West Coast? Tell me about the day that you're there. All of those things. Perfect. Uh, so next question. <laughs> we uh, it's a dog show done differently, as John O'Hurley likes to say. But John and I actually sat in a coffee shop uh, out at the location as we were talking about doing it, and we, and we drew drew up the plans for this show. But it's like a fashion esque show runway for the best in show competition a long red carpet um lots of people in uh, on television and it's um exciting and, and we have all the celebrities uh, dotted through the audience and they're there with their dogs a lot of them many of them bring their own dogs but every once in a while we have to remind them that they're not really the stars here today the dogs are the stars and any of us with dogs understand that full well where the do where people come up to us and say oh my dogs 
Grace, Angel, how are you doing? And they'll look at me and say, how are you doing? Like, I'm an afterthought, you know? But, uh, but that's the same thing with these stars, and they understand that because they have that same kind of relationship with their dogs. Do you have any uh, uh, favorite celebrity? Wh- which celebrity dog combo looked the most alike this year? Because that, <laughs> you that know? happens to every dog owner. <laughs> well, that's not a bad thing. I, but I always say, you know, yes, dogs do start, owners do start to look like their dogs after a while, but it's, it's not always a good idea to point that out. <laughs> so... <laughs> But, geez, we've got Bo Derek. We've got Bo Derek. She has German Shepherds. Now, they may not look a lot alike, but they have that same kind of carriage and elegance about them. And, and, but she comes every year. She actually has a pet grooming, a pet uh, shampoo and conditioning line that she sells. She comes and has a booth every year and hangs out with us and the celebrities. Uh, I love having the Triple Crown jockeys there, Mike Smith and, and uh, um, um, who's the other guy? American Pharaoh. <laughs> that was just a cough. I thought somebody had it. Hang on. <laughs> I saw it in the press release. I didn't write the names down. Oh, my gosh. But I know exactly who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but, uh, but those guys are fun, too, yeah. and, and it's nice to be taller than somebody because I have to stand, next, I have to stand next to O'Hurley when he's on the air. You know, he's like 6'3 and perfect yeah, hair and, and weighs about 190 pounds, and, and uh, it's tough to stand next to him. And his wife understands what that means. She says, how do you think I feel? She says, we walk into a room and nobody looks at me. She's a beautiful blonde woman, and... And uh, they're all looking at John and laughing about it. So we John does a- pull focus. That's yeah. when he was here. Everybody's like, "Oh, it's Peterman." There yeah. he is. Look at him. Um, so how the, you guys filmed? Uh, I want to say the beginning of March, early March. You filmed everything. We shot of the month. Shot ago, all up. And, yeah. it, and it always the dog show is always the first Saturday in March. The Beverly Hills, the Kennel Club of Beverly Hills, is the first Saturday in March. And and then the show. The actual show, the telecast, is on Easter Sunday. So last year, that was just four weeks later. This year, it's seven weeks later. So we've had to keep it a secret a little bit longer. We've had to rub out a couple of people who have loose lips. As Serious business. And yeah. You got to do what you got to so do. We want to keep it a secret and have a great surprise for everybody. At, well, it's pretty. Uh, I was thinking about that. I was like, man, he's got to sit on all these. He knows all the winners. <laughs> Guy knows the whole thing front to back. It's like there's, there's people at Netflix. There's people at Marvel. There's the Game of Thrones <laughs> cast. And then David Fry. If, These are the people <laughs> keeping America's secrets right now. <laughs> if people really wanted to know, they could find out. Yeah, I'm sure they could. But, <laughs> you know, have, have, come play along with us here. We have fun <laughs> and oh. uh, and get to see the great dogs and doing the fun things that they do. That's what's part of the surprise is what happens during the show. Yeah. Is that how we play in the celebrities and which dogs actually do win in advance? So the whole the whole show uh, for for us at home watching this Sunday on NBC, uh, it's going to be about, about two hours, I believe. It's yes. cut down. How long is the actual day that you guys are there? Well, we st- the shows the show the competition starts at eight in the morning and we finish about eight o'clock at night. So we're there wandering around in the early part of the day, doing shooting things backstage. And then the, comp- the, the heavy competition, the group competition, starts at 1 o'clock. A dog show, a competition in the dog show is like an advancing bracket in sports. Think March Madness. Yeah. You win at the first level. It's three levels. You win at the first level, which is breed competition. All the Afghan hounds compete against other Afghan hounds. One of them is judged to be best of breed in Afghan hounds. The Afghan hound breed winner advances into its group, seven different groups. They advance into the hound group where they compete against other hound breed winners. That could be anything from a dachshund to an Irish wolfhound. So you got that great variation in size. Uh, and, and then a judge has to pick one of them to be the group winner. Seven different groups, seven group winners. They come together at the end, and one of them is judged best in show. Do you do uh, you have to have a series of judges that are tapping in and out throughout the day, right? It can't possibly be the same person at 8 a.m. as it is at 8 p.m. Well, some of those judges may judge some breed competitions yeah. early in the morning, and then they'll come back and they'll judge a group competition, Not hopefully not including any of the dogs that they've already seen, although okay. it doesn't make any difference because they can't judge all of them. But uh, But each judge has to be judging when we talk about group judging. In the hound group, we've got an Irish wolfhound, the tallest breed, and we've got a dachshund. So you can't compare a dachshund to an Irish wolfhound. You have to compare the perfect, you have to compare the Irish wolfhound to the ideal specimen of, ideal, of, of Irish wolfhounds. And that's what's written in the standard, which is what the judges used to go by that describes that perfect specimen in terms of form and function, things, aesthetic things like color, but mostly on, on how it's built so that it can best perform its job. That's amazing. Now, I'm just thinking, it's because you got to keep them fresh. I, I'm thinking of fatigue. You get 12 hours of any job, by the end, it's just all snouts and tails. You don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> so you got to keep them fresh. You got to keep them fresh eyes on it. But I, oh, go on. What were you going to well, say? Well, that's what makes it fun, <laughs> is that there's 205 different breeds and varieties. So 
everything's a little bit different along the way. And, and uh, it's fun to see the great dogs, no matter what breed they are. And we'll get a few new breeds from time to time. And, and we'll have uh, dogs we've seen for a while. But each year, you might have a different dog from that breed representing. And, and maybe they're a little different than the previous year. And that's what's fun to me yeah. to see them in competition. Yeah. I saw, and I wrote this down because I want to get all the details right here. Last year, seven-year-old wire fox terrier named King was crowned best in show. All right, he would then later go on to win best in show at the 2019 Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. Are we, are the, is the Beverly Hills Dog Show becoming kind of like the Golden Globes to the Oscars, where we look at who wins, and it gives us an idea of the year to come and like the dogs to watch and stuff like that? Maybe, but don't sell us short. I worked a long time for Westminster, did their television for almost for 27 years, so I understand the great uh, legacy that Westminster has as a dog show for uh, in 150 years of, or so of being on. But Beverly Hills has that opportunity too because it is different. And what what, few, what people don't always know is that the largest contingent of dogs entered at Westminster every year for the past five or six years has been from the state of California. Yeah. Hard to believe when you got all these dogs in New York and New Jersey and Connecticut nearby, but there's a, there are great dogs in California, and they've made their presence known. This dog, King, uh, with a handler in California. Um, his handler, Gabriel Rangel, has won Westminster three times now. That's only two other people have won it more than that. And, and his owner, Victor Malzone, from Brazil, um, has, has won at Westminster before as well. So um, we see a lot of people that are in it for the great hobby that it is, and they do very well at it. And, and uh, just for the record, you said don't sell us short. I didn't mean it in that way because <laughs> honestly, and you know this, there a lot of people they prefer the Golden Globes. It's more fun. <laughs> it's more fun to watch. That's right. They know I what they're so doing too. over there. In They've this got instance, it figured out. in that comparison, yes, <laughs> oh, that's right. But King, you know, then then won, and when they win at Beverly at Beverly Hills and go on and win at Westminster, they would normally retire on the spot. So yeah. There was, um, there was something, uh, I, I, did, I feel like we never have enough time to talk about this, but now that it's just you and I, I really wanted to bring it up, and, and that is all the amazing work that your therapy do that you've done with your therapy dogs at the, the Ronald McDonald House in New York, uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, the New York VA Hospital. Uh, when, when did you first get involved doing that kind of work, and, and how does that feel? It's got to be rewarding providing that kind of that support and that kind of service. Well, I've been involved with therapy dogs since before I ever came to New York to work yeah. full-time for Westminster back in about 19... 99, I got my own dogs going on it. My wife, who I met through therapy dog work, um, uh, was in school to get her master's degree in theology and wrote her master's thesis on animal assisted therapy. So I was her dog wrangler. She was going through school, but it got me more intimately involved. We started our own charity here called uh, Angel on a Leash, right there, and, uh, and created and administered therapy dog programs in various facilities around the city, around the country, actually. But with my own dogs personally involved, not just administering the charity, but my own dogs, Grace and I would go right over here to the VA hospital every Wednesday and visit the guys and women who are there as patients, uh, many of them who would probably be living on the street if they weren't living in the hospital. But for, for the dog to come in and light up their day, get them to smile and talk and come alive, it's really great. A dog walks into the room, you're about to find out. A dog walks into the room and the energy changes. Yeah. And whether you get somebody just to smile or get to talk to you when maybe they haven't had much to say for a while. I, I've had nurses say to me as I walked around with the dog, I said, how about this guy? Can we visit him? I haven't seen him before. Yeah. And she says, no, we can't go in there. He's in the early stages of dementia. And when, he, when, a, when somebody comes into his room, he starts yelling. He speaks in gibberish. And, and we, we just don't want to upset him. And I said, well, you know what? That's exactly the kind of guy we should be visiting. So I went in there with, with Grace, and he lit up. He smiled, put his hands on either side of her face, pulled her down to him, and started talking to her and to me in gibberish. Yeah. He still was speaking in gibberish. And I would answer him. I said, that's right. Grace is beautiful. She comes here every week, and she's happy to see you. And, 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 and he'll speak to me in gibberish. I look over at the nurse who brought me in there, and she's crying because she's never seen this guy respond like that. So, you know, those things. We, we visited the Ronald McDonald House yeah. for years because my wife worked there uh, as part of it. She's a certified Catholic chaplain. But, but Bill Sullivan, who was the CEO at the Ronald McDonald House, would always say, when you get, a, when you get the child to smile, you get the parents to smile. The Ronald McDonald House is a, is, is a home away from home for kids with cancer who are coming to New York for treatment or clinical trials or surgeries or things like that. And, and to be able to, to do something in their day to help make their day 
uh, something. And it doesn't have to be so, as spectacular as Ron McDonald House or the VA. It, it can just be anybody who's having a bad day. Yeah. And maybe that's somebody in your office. Maybe it's somebody on the streets. And I saw uh, LAX is doing, uh, they have the pup program yeah. for people that are stressed out while they're flying. And they bring uh, puppies and dogs uh, of all sizes and ages around just to relax people and make Absolutely. them smile and, and make them feel better. You're right. There, there is something that the energy in the room changes. I think everybody should look into doing that with their own dog if, if they think their dog is capable of that th and do that. Because you're going to change somebody's life yeah. by doing that. And you might even change your own life, really. It changed my life. And yeah, but thanks for asking about it. Oh, of course. No, I was, I was excited that you were coming in. I was like, oh, it's just going to be Dave and I. We'll have time because I know you do all this amazing work. Uh, so I was, I was happy to bring it up. Thank uh, you. And a perfect segue as well. You said we're going to find out exactly how the energy in the room changes. Uh, we have you. I love having you here, but one of the bonuses, one of the perks, <laughs> you tend to bring friends. Like I said uh, to all these people in, in Beverly Hills, I said, you're not the star today. These guys are the stars. That's right. So our first star is here. Uh, this is, I believe, PJ, right? Did I get this there? PJ. This is PJ. This is PJ. Hound. Oh, my. Oh my gosh. Afghans what? were my original breed. That's how I got involved in yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. And if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, the king of dogs? The king of dogs. King of Terry dogs. Tevlin, the handler for PJ. Terry <laughs> won the national specialty with PJ's um, half sister this year. She lives in Connecticut. But PJ, you can see they're built for speed. They're from the Greyhound family. Wow. They've got all this great hair. They are the, the, the hunting dogs of the royal family in yeah. Afghanistan. But they would run their prey down in the desert and, and, and help. They're a sight hound. They hunt by sight. Yeah. They don't hunt by scent. That would be a scent hound. But they hunt by sight. Huh. And they run, run their prey down, and, and the hunter follows. I'm fascinated by it. You that. know what's amazing? There's, I've seen film of, I've seen video of, of a hunter using a falcon to also bring down the game, that, that the, the dogs would locate it, and the falcon would then go down and, and capture it. So That's incredible. It is amazing what they were originally were bred to do. You know, PJ's probably like a lot of Afghan hounds. My Afghan hounds, there weren't too many gazelle and snow leopard to find in, in uh, Seattle, Washington, where I lived. Uh, <laughs> so they just really are kind of couch dogs now. But, you know, they're a beautiful dog. Look at all that. Can you What's imagine all this work that goes into this? I was going to say, this looks like it, this doesn't happen that she didn't. Uh, PJ didn't wake up this way, let's, right? Like, let's, see those, let's see those ears, Terry. Show us the ears. Look at that oh ear. Oh, my gosh. He's nine years old. That's nine years' worth of, of ear growing. But the other thing, too, is these dogs have better hair products than any of us use. I believe it. <laughs> so. What's the hair retention like? How much of that you find it around the apartment? I feel like <laughs> that, that, I feel like PJ's leaving a trail wherever PJ goes, right? Is it? <laughs> you got a big lint roller, don't you? You got to have one of those. We, uh, we support the lint roller industry. Um, but the other thing, too, one time I said on television, um, we people in dogs, we think of dog hair as a, as a uh, condiment. In, in our homes, <laughs> and, and my wife heard and me say that. She says, yeah, well, that's what my wife said. She says, that's not a very good reflection on, on my housekeeping. <laughs> I said, well, it's true, though, and everybody knows that it's true in our world. So, but PJ, That's pretty uh, incredible. A beautiful specimen he is. He's done a lot of winning. Wow. And, I believe uh, it. Well, I want to thank you. First of all, thank you so much for bringing PJ to, to be up close and, and see a, a beautiful, uh, I don't know, what do you say, specimen, creature, friend, Dog, <laughs> PJ is fantastic. Is uh, can PJ hang out while our next guest comes up? Can they be up here together? Okay, because we have the other end of the spectrum now. <laughs> Wait, yes. PJ, if you want to hang backstage just a little bit, just tuck back, and we'll bring up. Uh, I want Mika. 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 That's right. Mika, get over here. Mika <laughs> is a Bergamasco. Oh my gosh. Me <laughs> <laughs> with with Jane Bass <laughs> handling, but. But uh, it says in their standard, that written standard that I was talking about that de it describes the ideal specimen of the breed, it says in their standard that they should have a rustic look. Well, wow. Mika is... And here we are. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, <laughs> how old's Mika? Mika is eight. Mika is eight. You know, it takes a while for these cords to form when they're That's puppies. Ask, yeah. but, uh, but with a Bergamasco, it's three types of hair that make these that make these cords, and they're not called cords in Bergamasco, they're called cords in the Commodore mm. or the Pooley, but, but this is, these are called flocks in the, flock. with the Bergamasco. Mika has but gorgeous flocks, I'm going to hate Their uh, origins are in the Alps, where they're hey. herding sheep hey. and goats and, and other livestock around. But they're a strong dog. They're, they're not as big as you might think under all that hair, but still there's 75, 80 pounds of dog in there. Like yes? Yeah. Narrow like a sight hound. <laughs> How much do you weigh? Yeah. 58 pounds. 
If we were to shave Mika, we're not going to. But how much would Mika weigh after? With not that heavy. Let me, I'm gonna get over there. I'm gonna go. Let me feel the fluffiness heard, of the hair. I've heard of a commodore once who was a larger dog who had all of his cords cut Very off when fluffy. he retired. And they weighed fluffy. them. They weighed 25 pounds. So. Skin under there. That's her skin, and it's loose. So they don't. Uh, they don't get. Warmer, they don't. Tender is cooler. They don't. I, I don't want to give away any of your secrets here, Jane. But they don't get bathed all that often. What three or four times a year, maybe? Yeah, they have an oil on their skin yeah. that makes it kind of waterproof, and yeah. that's what helps keep them from absorbing the water in the yeah, but rain. You, and but you bathe, bathe them, them like you would wash a sweater. Yeah. Put them on their back. Dip them in the water. And, and so if you if you blow dry them, it could take a couple of hours to do it. But if air days. dry is a couple of days. Days, yeah. You want a hot summer day if you're going to air dry them. Otherwise, they're like a wet Persian rug, <laughs> good wool rug that loves that water. You know. So where if, if we had to, because we're comparing apples to oranges here. But the uh, the uh, yeah, come on up, come on up, because we have like I said, it's both ends of the spectrum. This is like. I'm still very young. My mom keeps my hair in perfect condition. This is I've gone to college and I'm experimenting now, <laughs> and uh, and I'm just figuring myself out. But if we had to, who, uh, the amount of maintenance is it about even just different kinds of maintenance? Oh no, this no. is by far more by maintenance. Far. Okay, I, even you are saying yes. Okay. You you they're tough when they first. They're born fluffy. They're all fluffy like a regular puppy, and then around ten months, their adult hair, their goat hair undercoat starts growing in. Then the, then the wool, and that comes in like a felt blanket. And that's when their work. But then their hair sticks straight up with a little tuft underneath it. And everybody calls the, AS, AS, the ASPCA on you because they think you're abusing your dog. Right. And, but once those flocks are formed, then it's just easy. You know, they, she gets muddy. You, she gets muddy. They shake off. It dries off. But that's why that oil is so important. That natural oil. I wish you guys could see the eyes looking through these little tufts of fur. It is unbelievably adorable. That, uh, that is made for nature. When, when they're in the Alps, their long eyelashes keeps their hair up off their faces to protect them from snow blindness. I'm learning so much right now. We have, uh, if you don't mind, I'd love for everyone to hang out on stage. I'm gonna. We have a question from Twitter that I'm gonna throw to real quick here. This comes from uh, Kiki Cat XOXO. Fantastic name. Uh, says hi. If you were a dog, what kind of dog would you be? I'm gonna assume that's for David. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I always tell people I'd want to be my dog because of the great benefits that there are to that. But. But uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm a sporting guy. My, my background in growing up is in sports, so I'd love to be a sporting dog and run or, or a hound, a hunting hound and run, a, a sight hound that runs and gets to be active and athletic. And, yeah. and if I was only taller and skinnier, it would work, but <laughs> it's a dream. <laughs> you just need to hang out with John a little less. That's what I think it is. I think he's getting to you, David. You're oh, beautiful the way you are. It? Why, thank uh, you. We, we <laughs> I'll tell him that. <laughs> We've got, I think, what's it, one more? I'm seeing here one more question from the room with the microphone. So let's go ahead. It looks like all the way in the back. Please ask your question. Go for it. Hi. Um, so you spend a lot of time with dogs and dog lovers. What are your thoughts on cat people? <laughs> we, I think that one was for you. No, no. Uh -huh. think that was, they're all for <laughs> we you. We love cats. We, do, we love cats. They are different than dogs. You know, a, a, a dog wants to live in your world. They want to be with you and do everything with you. A cat might let you into their world if yeah. you're lucky. But, uh, but we love cats, and they really complement each other. Do you, have, do you have cats? No, no cats in this family. But um, I had a cat lived with me and all my Afghan hounds in Seattle on our, on, in our kennel, and, and uh, they tolerate the dogs. They, but, but the cats run the house. There's no question. Thank you. Good question. That was a great question. Thank you. Uh, we're getting the signal. we got to wrap things up, but I want to thank everyone. First of all, thank you for your question. Thank everyone for being here and hanging out with us. Uh, remind those watching at home that this Sunday, Easter Sunday, uh, third annual Beverly Hills Dog Show presented by Perina on NBC. You, got, what, you have to watch it. It's going to be unbelievably fun. I can't wait. Uh, uh, everyone, please make a wonderful amount of noise to join me in thanking once again David Fry, uh, PJ, and Mika for being here. And and they're fantastic handlers who, uh, I did that thing humans do. I've only focused on the dogs, and I didn't retain your names. It's our world. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for being here and making all of this possible. Uh, round of applause, please, everybody. Let's go. Thank you.